In this video, I'm going to look at how you can get started with video capture and image processing on the BeagleBone. It is an introductory video that should give people who are new to this topic a starting point to work from. I will look at three different distinct challenges. First, how do you capture video from a USB webcam under Linux? Second, how do you capture image frames from a USB webcam under Linux? And finally, how do you use OpenCV to capture and image process frames so that you can build computer vision applications under Linux on the BeagleBone? I'm going to use a specific webcam from Logitech that I would highly recommend because of its high resolution capability, but you should be able to adapt the code to your specific camera. The good news is that once you have the source code examples, it's not too difficult. The latest Angstrom distributions come with almost everything you need particularly pre-built video for Linux and OpenCV libraries and support. What I have done here is aggregate the code that you need and customize it for the camera that I'm using. If you are building Angstrom, bit baking custom Angstrom distributions to include these packages, or you are building FFmpeg from source, you might be interested in my new personal site, DerekMalloy.ie, where I have separate posts on each of the topics. Go to the section on blog, BeagleBone for all of my posts. The site is only new, so I'll be adding more content as I'm working on projects. Okay, so for this video, I'm using the BeagleBone Black, which is the latest BeagleBone that's available. It's a very powerful BeagleBone with a 1 GHz ARM A8 processor with 512 megs of DDR3 RAM. A great improvement for doing any sort of image processing, which is resource intensive. The other improvements over the BeagleBone White are the onboard HDMI output and a 2 GB eMMC, which means you get boot times of around 10 seconds. And you still have the SD slot for additional storage. The best thing has to be the price. At $45, it's significantly cheaper than any other device out there for the specification, and it is very good value for money. For the camera, I'm using a Logitech C920, which is a top of the range USB webcam. At about $80, it's not cheap, but it's a high quality camera that has features that could be really useful in embedded applications or robotic applications. The big advantage of this device is that it is capable of recording full HD, that's 1080p, and encoding it in real time using the H.264 compression format. It has a very good quality Carl Zeiss lens that has a 20 step autofocus. There is good Linux support for the camera and I have found it to be a straightforward device to interface to. It's a USB 2 device and comes with about 6 foot of cable. It has a high quality feel to the surround. It's not small but I suppose it needs space to store the video encoding circuitry. It has a really useful socket that is formed in metal on the bottom that will be great for mounting the camera securely in robotic applications. Overall, it feels like a solid piece of equipment that will be capable of taking some accidental abuse. I have adapted and written some code for all of the examples that are presented here in this video. It is available at my GitHub site, github.com slash Derek Malloy. And the repository for the project is Bone CV, with the CV meaning computer vision. In this repository, you'll find the C and C++ files for the projects, and scripts for building the code and for using FFmpeg to enclose raw streamed H.264 video in a H.264 container. In my setup, you will notice I am powering the camera using a barrel jack and a 5 volt 1 amp supply. I was getting I.O. communication errors at one stage with this camera and it came down purely to the fact that powering the BeagleBone Black and camera through the USB hub on my monitor was not providing enough current. I tried it on my laptop and it worked fine. So just be careful that you are getting enough power to the devices. As I said, the problem didn't appear as a brownout problem. It just resulted in an IO error between the camera and BeagleBone when I tried to capture video and I was trying to debug it in software. So first I'm going to check that the camera is working and download the source code. So first things first, secure shell into my BeagleBone. can see here that I'm running uh, Linux 3.8.11 and it's a standard angstrom distribution. So the first thing we want to do is we've plugged in the camera so we want to see if LS USB shows up and it does so that's good news you can see bus 0 device 002 
Logitech Incorporated. So that's the camera has shown up. And, and as a result of that, if we go into slash dev, um, well, LS minus AL did it. You can see down here, we've got video zero. So slash dev slash video zero uh, refers to the camera. So the next thing I want to do is to use video for Linux. Now video for Linux is also called V4L. It's a video capture application programming interface for Linux. It supports many of the USB webcams and TV tuners. So it's closely integrated with the kernel and it's very stable. So we need to check to see that video for Linux 2 is working with our camera. So we can do that by using V4L2 minus CTL. And you can see that if we go minus H, you can see all of the options. There's a, a good array of options available. So if we go V4L2 control minus list, uh, minus list uh, devices, you can see, oops, what did I do wrong there? Oh, you can see here, list devices, HD uh, Pro web, Webcam C920 slash dev slash video zero. And if we do, if we want to get all of the possible options that are available for uh, our camera, we can go minus all, and hopefully you can see all of this. If we go up, you can see driver name UVC Video HD Webcam Pro C920, the driver version, video capture, it's capable of video capture streaming. Um, and you can see it's currently set for 640 by 480 in pixel format YUYV. Um, and that's the size of a single image. And you can also see that we've some degree of information about brightness, contrast, saturation, and so on. So we do have the option to, do, to change these values. For example, if I wanted to set the brightness, at the moment it's set for 128, we could do something like this. We could say V4L2 minus CTL uh, minus minus set CT or L equals brightness. So these are our fields. So brightness, contrast, saturation, we can change any of these. So we can see it goes from zero to 255. So we can say brightness equals, let's say 200. And if we go, v4l2 minus ctl minus minus all you can see now that our value is 200 associated with the brightness and that will affect the capturing properties of the camera let's just set it back uh, just to keep it consistent okay so v4 all minus all uh, one of the things that this camera is capable of doing is going much to a much greater resolution it's able to go up to um, capture at one uh, 1920 by 1080 that's the full HD resolution uh, so we, we can change that uh, at the runtime but just one second I just want to do this v4 l2 minus ctl ct uh, or l minus minus list formats so here you can see we're capable of recording or uh, capturing yuyv and also H264 and this is the one I'm most interested in because that's that's really what makes this camera expensive it's, it's the it's the feature that allows us to stream H264 or MPEG4 video directly to our file system so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually set uh, the resolution and we can do this by saying V4 L2 minus CTL and I'm going to do this in code too, but this is how you would do it at the command line. Set FMT minus video equals width equals 1920 and the height equals 1080 and the pixel format equals one. Oh, what have I done wrong? Okay, fix that. So that worked that time. So now if we go list for, uh, minus all, you'll see that the width and height are set to 1920 by 1080 and the pixel format is H264. So that's uh, that allows us to change and our brightness is back at 128. Okay, so we're on the device. So let's go to home. And I'm gonna make, uh, well, let's, let's just get the, the code git clone git colon slash slash and, and you can see this well this is where i have the code uh, github.com slash derek malloy and the code is in bone cv so pressing that 
So you can see github.com. And here are the files, bonecv.cpp, that's for the end program, that's for um, OpenCV, OpenCV timing. This is my build script, my capture um, program that's adapted for V4L software, and my grabber.c uh, for grabbing, the capture captures video and grabber grabs a single frame. And then raw tempeg4 is just a script to convert using uh, FFmpeg. So we're going to clone this source. So just minimize this. Derek Malloy Bone CV. Slash Bone CV dot git. I don't know if I need to capitalize it. I'll try capitalize it. Okay, so that that has cloned the source. So if we go into bones, bone CV, you can see those files have now been uh, um, copied here. So the first point I said I was going to do was to capture video directly from the camera. Um, this would be perfect if you had a project, for example, where you wanted to capture video when a sensor is triggered. For example, you could connect a PIR, a passive infrared sensor or ultrasonic sensor to one of the GPIOs and when motion is detected, the camera could be triggered to record video and store it on the file system. In this case, I'm going to record the video to the file system. However, it would be possible with a small amount of coding to stream the data to a socket where it could be transferred over the internet to a host computer that was decoding the data stream. The really nice thing about this program is that I'm going to use the H.264 format that is provided by the camera. This means that the camera is doing almost all of the work and the load on the beagle bone itself is very light. Well, that would be compared if you were doing, for example, a software transcode of the video stream. Um, the beagle bone in this case is just going to be responsible for taking the data from the camera and storing it in the file. The program in this case is going to be called, is called capture.c. And if you see capture.c, you'll notice very clearly that I didn't write it. It comes from linuxtv.org. It's one of the appendices in the Video for Linux documentation. So all I have done is taken that code from that site and modified it slightly to add in this minus F mode, which allows the C920 to record H.264 data to the uh, file system. So it's a long enough program, and I can't go through it all here. The modification that I've added is down here is just to create this new option where you use minus f uh, so if the force format is 2 that's if we pass minus f we'll see it sets the pixel width to 1920 the pixel height to 1080 and the pixel format is a standard that's defined within the video for linux library v4l2 pix format h264 the standard that's already defined so we have to set the set the pixel format to that type uh, so I have usage described here. So if we quit out, the first thing we have to do before we do anything though is to build it. Um, and if you see here, I've created a build script. It's called build. And if we go more build, you can see that it builds all four of the programs that I use in this video directly. Uh, in the case of the capture program, it's down here. We're just doing using PKG config. Now it doesn't do an awful lot in the case of uh, lib v4l2. Uh, but for example, in the case of OpenCV, let's look at what PKG config does. Well, it allows us to set up the environment. If we just echo PKG config to the command prompt, we'll see uh, C flags, OpenCV, for example. It comes up and says, well, this is, these are the flags that we need for OpenCV. If we do the same, only we do it for the libraries that are required you'll see it gives us the correct sets of libraries that we need to include as part of our, uh, our compilation of bone CV. So PKG config does that. And in this case here, you can see um, that we're using the same for video for Linux. So if I, if I copy that, paste it here, that should go off and compile. Um, Okay, so I'm going to execute the program, capture, just get the commands. So we can execute it by typing dot slash capture uh, minus F to force this format to be H264 um, minus C. How many frames we want to capture? Well, 10 seconds, 
I'll capture 20 seconds, 600. Oh, uh, that should be 600. And then we want to output it and, and send that to output dot raw. This is the file that's used then for the uh, conversion. So let's force format to two, and you can see each time a dot appears, that means it's capturing a frame at 30 frames a second. Uh, so it should sh stop after 20 seconds. Okay. See, it's working quite well. It's working, there's no pauses or breaks. It worked very well. And you can see if I get the listing, you can see that that has captured output.raw, and it's seven, it's just over, seven megabytes. So that's a pretty good um, compression ratio for um, for 20 seconds of video at, at full HD. Uh, we need to convert this, unfortunately, that's a, a raw H.264 stream, but we need to wrap it with a header. And I've, I've done this by, in a, by creating a script, raw to MPEG, um, raw to MPEG. And all it does is calls FFmpeg. There's details on how to build FFmpeg. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's part of the standard distribution for Angstrom. Um, I don't think I had to build it in this case, but there are instructions on how to build FFmpeg at my website. So we can just execute this by, you can see it's gonna happen very quickly. All it's doing is saying, forcing the format to H.264, which it already is. That's the input file, output.raw. Uh, vcodec is copy, so it's just gonna copy the data verbatim and the output file is called output.mpeg4. So you'll see when I execute this, dot, dot, uh, dot slash raw to mpeg4, you'll see that it happens very, very quickly. So very quickly, and if you consider it's after creating a new file and copying the contents of seven megabytes, it was very quick. So this is on our BeagleBone. We now have a file called output.mpeg4, so we might want to look at the video. Uh, so uh, I'll open up a new X term. Okay, and we're going to we're going to copy the contents to our local uh, machine. Uh, so I have to SS SFTP to my BeagleBone root at 192.168.1.121. Log in as root, and I'm in the directory. Um, uh, well, let's let's copy to the desktop LCD desktop. Okay, uh, and on the remote on the BeagleBone, it's uh, Bone CV. Okay, so get uh, output, uh, we'll just uh, out dot mp4. So you can see it copied across, and up here you can see I now have output that mpeg4. So I've captured, I've captured a video of my fish tank. Uh, hopefully the fish are doing something interesting, and I can just, well, uh, double click. They're not doing something too interesting, but you can see here that the quality is 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 good. Um, I don't know if it's going to translate. You can see uh, fish is clear. It's definitely HD video, and uh, it's fairly clear. I might encode it separately into the video so you can see it. So that's the that's playing on the virtual machine on my on my Windows machine. Um, so I don't know if it captured well through Camtasia, but I'll play it into the video anyway. Okay, so that shows um, that we're capable using the Beagle Bone of capturing real-time MPEG-4 video using this camera, the C920 camera, Logitech C920, and it works very well. The next part that I'm going to look at is how do we capture a single frame? Because we might just want to get a single frame at 1920 by 1080, and to do this, I have another program called Capture, uh, sorry, Grabber.c, and this one comes directly from uh, the uh, the video for Linux 2 uh, example from the um, appendices of the uh, documentation and you can see all I've done here is set the libraries to the pal I've done absolutely nothing to change this so we can build this again so I'm just going to build this um, build and you can see that, that there's the uh, the code in this case for to build uh, to build grabber Okay, so off it goes. It's quick enough. 
and you can see we now have our grabber executable. Uh, to execute this, we just do dot slash grabber. Um, so it'll detect that the, the video camera is video slash DEV zero, and it uses whatever you've set in the um, using the video for Linux V4L minus CTL to use that as the properties for creating the files. So what this is doing is grabbing um, a number, I think it's tw 20, we'll see in a second, raw files, the camera is on at the moment and it's grabbing uh, the images and storing them as PGM format, which is just an absolute raw, unincompressed format. So you can see uh, when we list it, we have our PPM rather, uh, it's, it, we have our 20 PPM files and they're fairly sizable because, well, it's six, six megabytes per image. And that's because, well, there's six megabytes of image data there. It's 24 bits per pixel multiplied by 1920 by 1080. And that's the amount of data that's present. So each one of these PPM files is now available as, a, as, an, as an image. Um, we can take them back. Uh, I don't know if we have a way of, of viewing them. Let's get... Okay, I don't know if we have a way of viewing it here. Okay, it worked. So there's one of our frames, um, and we can, it, it's in completely uncompressed format. So it's possible for us then to store it like that, or obviously we can, we can encode these files if we write some code to turn them into JPEG or PGM images, uh, we can we can store them then uh, in, a, in a compressed way. So that's a raw image. And, and really, if you're doing a computer vision application or image processing application, you really want the raw data. You can't really work with compressed images because the compression introduces artifacts, blocking artifacts in the case of JPEG, for example. So you have to be careful uh, to work with the raw images. But that, that is, it's a six, uh, you know, a six megabyte image for a single frame but it is good if we want to work with that for image processing. Uh, so the last thing, so that, that allows us to grab an image. Obviously it's incomplete in that uh, we, we would need to um, um, do some sort of compression for it to be a, a reasonable uh, application if it was to grab frames in a security type application. But for the moment that works perfectly well. So RM startup PPM. Uh, the last application I'm going to use is the uh, Bone CV and Bone CV timing, and it's essentially the same application. Um, but what it does is, if we look at the code, you can see it's surprisingly short, um, and this deals with, and this is the really nice thing here, is actually deals with the um, conversion and compression of the image from raw format into a, a PNG format. Uh, so the code itself uh, include IO stream, include OpenCV2. I'm actually going to use a fairly well. It's it's it, it's the the object oriented way of working with uh, OpenCV, and I think it's a much easier way to work with OpenCV than using the C structures. So we're using namespace CV, namespace standard, which is a standard thing to do in in C++. And the code becomes much easier because we're working with classes. So for example, here's my code to set up a capturing device, capture zero, which will refer to slash dev slash video zero. Capture set, the frame width to 1920. Capture set, the frame height to 1080. And if we fail to open the capture device, print out a message to say we failed to connect to the camera. Otherwise, we continue and we create a, um, a data structure to store the frame, which is the raw image data, and edges, which is going to be my edge conversion. My, I'm going to do an edge detection on these images. Uh, to capture an image to a frame, you just do that, which I think is a really nice feature of the OpenCV2, the C++ version. So capture uh, the output stream operator, uh, sorry, input stream operator to the frame. And then if the frame is empty, we fail to capture an image. Otherwise, we can convert it from a color image uh, into a black and white image or grayscale image. Zero to 255 is the level of each pixel. And this image is, is gonna be called edges. Now at the moment, it's just this grayscale version of the color image. But this is when we turn it into an edge image. We call the canny edge detector, which takes our edges as our input and edges as our output. And then with these values, creates our edge uh, image. 
we write the edges image to edges.png and we write the frame, the original data to frame uh, to capture that PNG. So let's build this now and we can say, well, I'm going to use the build script this time. Okay. So this will build all four applications. This was building the OpenCV example. Okay, so if I go to SPSAL, we can see we can execute the bone CV application. Dot slash bone CV executed. We get these inval valid arguments. Now, from what I've read online, there isn't really an issue with this. The camera is on at the moment. It's gone off and it's now processing. It's done the edge detection. Um, so this invalid argument um, issue seems to come up an awful lot for people. So uh, I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. So we ended up with our capture.png and our edges.png. So I'm going to get them back. So get capture.png and get edges.png. So this is using OpenCV2. You can see here's our capture.png. So that's the, um, you know, that's it at, at full resolution. Hopefully you can see that. That's our image that we've captured using OpenCV and then edges.png. You can see there's the edge detection. So I've used OpenCV, uh, the standard canny edge detector, to do an edge detection. It's a bit over-segmented, but you can see roughly the edges around the walls and so on. The, the background of the fish tank is a little bit over-segmented. You can clearly see the reflections as well in the actual, um, in the actual uh, fish tank. So there's the original and the uh, image processed application. So the point of this is now that if you use this um, code from my um, repository and you download it, you have full access then to, um, or a, a template rather, to build your own OpenCV applications and integrate your own functionality within OpenCV. So the final program we have here is BoneCV Timing. And if we look at the code for this, you can see that it opens up, sets up the capture device, a resolution 640 by 480, and um, does everything as before, except for at this time we're getting the top, we're getting a real time time from the clock uh, in uh, nanoseconds. And what we're going to do is do 10 frames, capture 10 frames, capture the image, process it with the canny detect, well, convert it into grayscale, uh, get the canny edge detection, and do that 10 times in a row, just to give us an idea of how long it takes for each frame. And we're using 640 by 480 here, which is a fairly good resolution for an image processing application. This then gets the time when it's finished and print and, and displays it. So. Let's execute this. Well, before I do that, I'm just going to see what, what our CPU frequency is. So CPU freak minus info tells us that our CPU frequency is 100, uh, sorry, 1000 megahertz, which is one gigahertz. And our governor is performance. Um, so which means it may decide to use which speed in this range. Okay, so we're going to execute this at that level by typing dot slash bone CV timing and it should take it's gone off to do 10 frames so it took 2.44802 seconds to process 10 frames uh, which means that it's capable of doing four frames per second which is which is very good so at this point we're grabbing a frame converting it to grayscale and getting a canny edge detection at a rate of four frames a second. If, for example, we were to change the CPU frequency just to see the effect, uh, so again, uh, we were at, uh, you can see here, the current CPU frequency is 1000 megahertz as asserted by a call to hardware. We can set this down and you can see we can choose 300, 600, 800, or 1000. We can go and say CPU frequency uh, minus set uh, minus F. 
and we can say, well, let's change this to 300 megahertz. Okay, that seemed to work. Let's just get the info again. And you can see now that uh, user space, uh, we're now at 300 megahertz. So let's run the same program again. And um, bone CV timing. So the last case, if you remember, it was 2.44 seconds to process 10 frames. So 4.08 frames per second. So we're down to 300 megahertz. And obviously it'll take longer. So it took 6.53 seconds to process 10 frames. So at 300 megahertz, we're only capable of 1.53 frames per second. Now that's not bad. Uh, on, a, on a proportional basis, it's giving us a, a very good response. So, you know, even at 300 megahertz, which you could use for power saving for battery type applications, we're still getting fairly good results. Uh, so that's that's that project. Again, you can download the code for this and change and adapt it for your applications. Um, but it should provide you with a template to start capturing video, to start capturing uh, raw uh, photographs or frames from your camera. And finally, to do some processing using OpenCV. OpenCV is a very large library of code that you can use and there are many, many, many applications that you can perform with it. Hopefully this just provides you with the starting point. So that's it for this video. This is video number 10 in my series on the Beaglebone. So feel free to go back to the channel and look at the other nine.